Hello friends, are you tired of learning books for hours and hours and still not getting results? Now just subscribe to our YouTube channel and review a topic in 5 minutes in an interactive manner. Hey guys, so today's topic is asthma. Guys, asthma is a sort of COPD which is characterized by bronchoconstriction and hypersecretion of the tracheobronchial glands due to the increased responsiveness of these glands and the smooth muscles to the external allergen. Talking about the pathophysiology of bronchial asthma, it is actually due to the increased responsiveness of the tracheobronchial glands to the external allergen and it consists of two reactions. One is the early phase reaction or the early asthmatic reaction and the other is the late asthmatic reaction. The early asthmatic reaction, it involves the release of histamine from the mast cell which leads to the bronchoconstriction. Please recall that the mast cells contain the histamine and they have the IgE antibodies over their surface and whenever the external allergen comes it leads to the cross-linking of the IgE molecules and as a result of which the degranulation of the mast cells take place releasing the histamine and histamine is a potent bronchoconstrictor which leads to bronchoconstriction. The late phase reaction it involves the migration of eosinophil and lymphocytes into the airways which results in bronchoconstriction and inflammation with mucus plugging. Now coming to the treatment part. See I have made it very very simple. We have to do two things. One is bronchodilation and other is reversing the bronchoconstriction. Let's talk about the bronchodilators first. Guys taking it on to the biochemical level we have a molecule which is called as the cyclic AMP which causes the bronchodilation. These bronchodilators act by increasing the level of cyclic AMP. In this class we have two drugs. One is the beta agonist and other are the phosphodiesterase inhibitors. Let's do the beta agonist first. These include the drugs like salmetrol, albuterol and terbutylene. These act via inducing the enzyme adenylcyclase which increases the level of cyclic AMP and this increased level of cyclic AMP causes the bronchodilation. Guys, the cyclic AMP is a temporary molecule and it is degraded by the enzyme phosphodiesterase into a product called as 5-AMP. Now the class of the drugs like phosphodiesterase inhibitors, these inhibit the enzyme phosphodiesterase and hence prevent the degradation of cyclic AMP into 5-AMP. The example is theophyte. Guys, now, now comes the second line of management that is reversing the bronchoconstriction. See, there are three molecules which cause the bronchoconstriction. One is acetylcholine, then adenosine and leukotrienes. So we have to individually block these molecules so as to reverse the bronchoconstriction and cause the bronchodilation. Number specific blockers like ipratropium and triatropium, they block the acetylcholine, while adenosine is blocked by theophylline and the leukotrienes, they are blocked by two classes of drugs. One is the LOX inhibitors, that is the lipoxygenase inhibitors and others are the receptor blockers. Guys, now let's cover the individual drugs quickly. First of all, we have the beta agonists. These beta agonists include the shorter acting drugs like albuterol and terbutaline, which are used to manage the acute attacks of asthma, while the longer acting drugs include the salvetrol, which is used for prophylaxis of asthma. The mass clinic blockers include the drugs like ipratropium and triatropium, which are used along with the beta blockers to manage the acute attack of asthma. They can also be used to reverse the bronchospasm, which is caused by the beta blockers. Guys, coming to theophylline, it causes bronchodilation via inhibiting the phosphodiesterase and it also reverses the bronchospasm which is induced by the adenosine. But the concern with theophylline is that it has a narrow theoropathic index and can cause cardiotoxicity and neurotoxicity. Example is aminophylline which is used IV in the management of status asthmaticus. Now let's cover the anti-leukotrienes. This consists of two classes of drug. One are the leukast drugs, which include the multi-leukast and the zephyleukast. This block the leukotriene receptors, while the other class consists of a single drug called as the xyluton, which is an inhibitor of lipooxygenase enzyme, which is involved in the synthesis of leukotrienes. Coming to mast cell stabilizers, we have got chromoline and nidochromil. These stabilize the mast cells and prevent the release of histamine from them. Now last but not the least, we have got glucocorticoids. This block the phospholipase enzyme leading to decrease in the production of prostaglandins and leukotrienes. These include the drugs like bidisonide and flunisolide which are used for inhalation to manage the acute attacks while we have got prednisolone and IV steroids which are used to manage the severe attacks of asthma like the status asthmaticus.